nine people. Three must sit next to each other. Yeah. And I imagine um, and we're in a row, not in a circle. Yeah, arrange them. They can be arranged in a row. So how many ways can we arrange them? You say what you said you did say around a circle or no, it's a uh, in a row. Okay. And the three that sit next to each other, do they have to sit next to each other in any particular order or does it just have to... three that sit okay. next to each other? So I would imagine this the way here's how I would imagine this. I've got nine spots. Six, seven, eight, nine. And before I do anything else, I kind of want to pick out where the three people are going to go. So essentially, if I think about the leftmost person, the leftmost person in the group of three, has, it looks like six different, uh, six or seven. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different spots they could sit in. So I'm seeing that there are seven choices for where the, for where the leftmost person sits in the group of three. Okay, so let's say I picked this spot right there. That's where the leftmost in the group of three is. For example. Okay, so then these three spots are taken. How many ways can I arrange those three people? Right, exactly. Three factorial, I'm assuming is what you're thinking there. And then for the other six empty seats, how can I arrange the people in those? Then yeah, right. So I guess technically we could write this as seven factorial times three factorial because the seven times six factorial is seven factorial. Interesting. Sure. Yeah. So so I guess another so another way to view this, and so this is kind of like pick the spot, we pick the leftmost spot, and then we arrange those three people or arrangements of those three. And then here's the arrangements of the other six. Another way to think about this, which is more apparent in this formula, is this seven factorial, basically, you treat that group of three as one entity. So essentially we have seven I don't want to say people, we have seven entities to arrange, right? There's the six people and the one group of three. And so how many ways can you arrange those? Seven factorial. And then we're multiplying by three factorial, the number of ways you can still arrange the three people within the group. Yeah, it's a good question. And then we also did one with the, the balls. I think it's like, there's 13, it would seem like there was a total of 13 balls. Okay. Um, I think it was four green, uh, like maybe three red mm -hmm. and two something. I don't know. Four I mean, green. I'm sorry. Like no, that's okay. We can make it. We can make. We can also make up numbers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, like you said, that two needed to be like, uh, like you only pulled two out of the mm -hmm. thirteen balls, and he's like, how many? And like, what was the probability of getting two of the same color? Okay. So let's say we pulled out four green, three red, and six blue, and we're about probability, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever, whenever I'm thinking about probability, the probability of something happening, probability, is always equal to, essentially, the very general way of thinking about it is it's the number of ways of getting what you want divided by the total number of ways anything can happen, or the total number of possible events. And I think he's I think he's using notation like like so for example the probability of a happening is the number of ways a can happen divided by the number of ways the whole set can happen where omega is the sample space the set containing all possibilities 
So in this particular example, we want to know, okay, what is the probability of choosing two balls of the same color? And I'm assuming this is without replacement. Because right, we're essentially picking two balls at the same time. Okay. So how many ways can we pick two balls of the same color? Good question. So the well, just right, like just thinking about the words that make sense here. The ways we can get this are we can get two green or two red or two blue, right? Those are the ways we could actually get two balls of the same color. Okay, so there's four green balls, right? So technically, right, I, even though they all look the same, right, maybe they're not all the same. Oh yeah, it's, I like to think of them as kind of being green marbles so you can kind of see that they look different even though they're all green. So there's gonna be four, the number of green balls, choose two, the number that we're picking. That's the number of different ways to get two green balls. Which is going to be six. Four two two is six. Yeah, interesting. Um, and then similarly, there's three choose two ways of getting two red balls, and there's six choose two ways of getting two blue balls. So the probability of getting two balls of the same color is going to be the number of ways of getting what we want. So four choose two plus three choose two plus six choose two divided by the thing we haven't calculated, which is the total number of things that can happen. So how many different ways can I pick any two balls? You're, you're thinking the right thing, but the, it's not quite two over 13. It's going to be 13 choose two. Oh. So, right, the number of ways you can pick any two balls is 13 choose two. Right, because really, just remember, right, 13 choose two is just 13 factorial over 11 factorial times two factorial, which is really just 13 times 12 divided by two. So if you think about it this way, what we're saying is there's 13 balls. I'm going to pick two of them. How many ways can I pick the first one? 13 ways. How many ways can I pick the second one after that? 12 ways. But then I'm dividing by two because I don't care if I pick this particular blue ball first and this particular red ball second, or if I pick that same red ball first and that blue ball second. I don't care which order I actually pick them in. So that's why we're dividing by the two factorial there. So that's the number of ways we can pick any two balls. And so then this would be our probability. Um, I can't imagine he would actually want you to calculate this. Oh, he did. Oh, he did? Okay, well, let me yeah, count. So it's like, yeah, they gave us 20 minutes and, or, okay. and they were like, oh yeah, you can't use the calculator, but the team was like, you're gonna have some really big numbers that you're gonna have to get it. Okay, so this one isn't too bad, but let, so let's calculate. So I'm gonna show you a couple things here. If I was calculating this, if I'm doing four two two plus three two two plus six two two, I'm gonna have four factorial over two factorial times two factorial plus three factorial over two factorial times one factorial, plus six factorial over four factorial times two factorial, over 13 factorial over 11 factorial times two factorial. And here's what I might notice about all of these. All of these fractions have a two factorial as a denominator. So what might be really convenient to do is to multiply everything by two over two. If I multiply this top part by two and this bottom part by two, I'm essentially going to cancel out each of these twos here. Two factorial is two. And the same thing on the bottom. So let me ask you now, 
if I'm calculating, if I do four factorial divided by two factorial, what am I left with on top? Left with four times three. Right, and that's it. Three factorial over one factorial, what am I left with? Right. And six factorial over four factorial? Uh, six times five. Right. And then 13 factorial over 11 factorial is going to be? Uh, 13 times 12. Right. And that's not too heinous in the world of multiplying things out. So if we do multiply this out, we're going to, let's see, 12 plus 6 plus 30 over, I don't really want to multiply that out, so I'm not going to. 13 times 12. Let's see, 36 plus 12 is 48 over 13 times 12. And they got lucky because 40 is a multiple of 12. So it's just going to be 4 over 13. Do that right then. <laughs> well, I also made up numbers then, right? So. Yeah, but I still need to. Sure. <laughs> Let's look at more examples. Unless you have other, well, unless there's other things that I can look at. Okay. Well, this is like 12.2 in the end, but that's probably not. Sure. So let's look at a few more actually jar examples because they are worthwhile. So let's say our jar contains five green balls, four red balls, and three blue balls. And we're going to randomly select three balls. Um, it was uh, four, seven, and two. Okay. So I think the only thing that would really change in this question would be, right, instead of, so instead of four, six, and three, it'd be four, seven, and two. It'd be a similar answer, a little different. Um, so, First question, how many ways can we get all green? So it's over, there's 12 of them, right? So there's 12 total. 12 choose three. So 12 choose three would be the number of ways I could get any three balls. Then um, like the permutation process, three, three, three. So if we were thinking permutations, we're thinking permutations usually because order matters. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we're, we're, we don't really care which order I would pick out the balls. Mm -hmm. So it definitely is a combination situation, but so, what we're trying to get is how many ways I can pick just three green ones, right? Because I want them all to be green. So how many green ones are there? Um, there are three. Oh, wait. Well, that's how many we're going to pick. Five. Right. So of those five green ones, how many different ways can I pick three of them? Sure. So I'm, you're going to have to get unused to using fractions. So fractions, so fractions definitely play a role here. And I actually want to point out the difference between them and this right now. So the number of ways we can get all green balls is five choose three, which if you calculate this out, five factorial over two factorial times three factorial, that ends up being five times four over two times one, which is 10. There's 10 different ways I could pick three of the green balls which I know might seem kind of weird, but here's what I mean. Here's my five green balls. And then over here on the side, I don't really care about these other ones for the moment, but here's my four red balls. And here's my three, I should have said black instead of blue. Here's my three black balls. I know you can't really see the colors, but they'll show up in the notes. So there's a lot of different ways I could pick three green balls, right? If I call this green ball one, green ball two, green ball three, green ball four, and green ball five, I could pick balls one, two, and three, or one, two, and four, or one, two, and five, or two, three, and four. I probably skipped, uh, I think there's another, let's see, one, two, three, one, four. I could probably do a, before I get too excited there, a one, three, and four, 
a one, three, and five, a one, four, and five, or a two, three, and four, or a two, three, five. I already have two. Ah, Seth, that's an excellent point, though. I already have two, one, five, because I don't care what order I picked them in. Two, three, five, two, four, five, um, I got two, three, four. I think I need, is that all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I always miss one. What am I missing? Two, three, five, two, three, four, two, four, five. Oh yeah, three, four, five. <laughs> there are 10 different ways I can pick the three balls if I don't care about the order and I don't care about the order. So whenever you're thinking about, okay, I just want to know how many ways I can pick so many things out of so many things. It's always this choose function. And again, this is the way I prefer to write it, but if you have a different way you'd like me to write it, I'm really happy to do so. But I can write it as C53, if that's something you like, or 5C3, or C of 53. All of those are notations that get used. I don't know what really he, you should do whatever you want. I like the horizontal one more because I feel like the, this one? the permutations are when it's like that, vertical. This way, so which one do you mean? Do you mean this one? Uh, yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay, sure. The nice thing about this one is this the way it shows it, is this is the way it shows up in the, like a TI calculator. And you're right. And then the, the permutation one is exactly the same formula, but with a P instead of a C. Um, so there are exactly 10 ways I can pick three green balls out of the five green balls there. Now, if instead I had asked, what's the probability of picking all three green? That's a different question. It's a very related question, but it's different because the probability should always be a number between zero and one. Or if you're talking about percent, between zero percent and 100 percent, same thing. So here, the probability of picking all three green would be the number of ways of getting all three greens. So I'm going to write the number of ways of getting three green divided by the number of ways that anything can happen. Well, the number of ways of getting three green, we just calculated that. It was 10. The number of ways of picking any three balls, well, if I have 12 balls to pick from, how many ways can I pick any three balls? So let's go. Right, it's exactly going to be, well, it's going to be 12 choose three, which then we would calculate it'd be 10 over 12 factorial over nine factorial times three factorial. That's going to be 10 over, let's see, the 12 becomes 12 times 10 times 11 over six. And at this point, I would do some. I would say this is 10 times 6 over 12 times 10 times 11 and cancel the 10s and cancel the 6 and say I get 1 over 22. So that's the probability of picking all three balls and having them all be green. The number of ways of getting what I want divided by, I actually didn't calculate the number of ways of, so I suppose I, I could point out that that number there is equal to uh, 220. So there's 10 ways of picking three balls, such that they're all three green. There's 220 ways of picking three balls so that anything happens. All three blue, all three red, two blue, one red, one blue, one green, right? Anything can happen. Okay, let's ask a different question. How many ways can we get all three of the balls we pick to be blue or yeah, blue, we'll go with blue. Well, how many blue balls are there? Three. Right, so, how, so if I pick three balls from this group of 12 balls, how many ways can I select three of them so that all three are blue? No, we're going back. So, so we're, it's a whole new situation. Okay. We've got 12 balls, five of them are green, four of them are red, three of them are blue. I'm going to pick three of them out of the tank. 
how many ways could I pick them out so that all three of the ones I get happen to be blue? Well, Right. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say it as three choose three, but yeah, three choose three. What's that gonna equal? Right. Because if there's only three blue balls to start with, the only way I can select all three balls to be blue is to pick exactly those three, and there's only one way of doing that. But yeah, we've got exactly zero fact, three factorial over zero factorial times three factorial. I don't like the little dot there. I feel like the dot is confusing with right parentheses. But zero factorial is one, and I just get three over three factorial over three factorial, which is one. Okay, and then just to kind of point out versus the probability of picking all three balls to be blue would of course be the number we just calculated, one out of the total number of ways of getting all three balls, any three balls, which we said before was 220. Number of ways of getting all three blue versus number of ways of getting any three. Let's look at a couple more. Oh, yeah, good examples. Let's continue with this. Example. All right. What's the number of ways to get one of each color? Well. Three factorial, three factorial, and 12, um, you know, 12, choose one or something? You're on, so yes, so kind of. So if I want to get one of each color, I want to choose from the five green ones, how many? Right. So it's going to be a five, choose one for the number of green ones. And then I'm going to have... Well, how many red ones do I want? Um, four, one. Right, that's the number of ways I can pick one red one. And then how about for the number of ways I can pick one blue one? Right. I always try to, I try to write this up, looks like what the calculator, like the calculator definitely does it as a, the C being larger there. So that's gonna be, five times four times three. And just as a quick aside here, right? Five choose one is always just, or anything choose one is just the number. So that's gonna be five times four times three, which is gonna be 60. Oh, so it doesn't have to be a factorial. Well, so I'm, they are fine. So I wanna make sure you understand the difference between there's the choose function and there's the factorial and they are related, but they're not the same. So, Five factorial is just, you know, five times four times three times two times one. Whereas five choose one is five factorial divided by four factorial times one factorial, which is going to be five times four times three times two times one divided by four times three times two times one times one. And then those cancel and we get five. So most of the time when we were talking about how many ways a thing can happen, it's usually either 5C1 or 5P1, right? Because it's either a combination or a permutation. Sometimes that ends up just being a factorial, but often there's a little more to it than just a straight factorial. Um, and then, so I feel like I keep saying this every time, just, just to kind of right, remind us, if instead we said, what's the probability of getting one of each color. Well, that would be exactly 60 out of 220. The number of ways of getting what we want, again, divided by the total number of possibilities. So I really wanna emphasize here, 220 is the total number of ways you could pick any three balls. That'd be one of each color, two of one color, one of another, 
three of one color in any sort of combination. How come it's the same as the other one when you're just choosing one? Color? Well, because, because in each of these problems, the kind of larger, the, so the, in each of these problems, I'm picking how many balls? I guess you're still doing three. Or right, three. right. So in every problem, if I'm picking three balls, then the total number of ways I can pick three balls is 12 choose three, which is 220. I could reduce, I feel like I have to reduce this fraction because I just do. But you're right, if we asked a different question, like about picking some different number of balls, then it would be out of a different number. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and keep going. What if instead I wanted the number of ways of getting two green and one red? Well, how many ways are they of getting two green? Um, so it would be two green, two red. Yeah, you're right. Perfect. Times how many ways are they of getting one red? Right. If you really wanted to be kind of extra about it, you could also throw in the number of ways of getting zero blues. You could multiply that by three choose zero, which would be one. So it's not going to make a difference. So here that's going to be five factorial over three factorial times two factorial times four factorial over three factorial times one factorial. Now I really do encourage you to get used to being like, oh, something choose one, that's just the number. I don't really want to write this out. I just want to be like four choose one is four. So I'm going to have five factorial with three factorial becomes five times four over two times one. And then I know that four factorial over three factorial times one factorial is just four. So I end up with five times four, which is 20, divided by two, which is 10, times four, which is 40. Um, there's something else I was going to say here. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, this, the probability, I'm not even going to write it down this time. The probability of getting two green balls and one red ball would be 40 out of 220. Okay. That's how, that was my answer. Right. Totally. Um, so, I, I, we could, if we really want to, I don't think this is the best answer, but we really could, if we want to exhaust every possibility, we could do all three red, all three blue, all three green. Then we could do two green, one red, two green, one blue, two red, one green, two red, one blue, two blue, one green, right? All the time. And then you could do one of each. Yeah. And then if we exhausted every possibility and added up all the numbers, it should add up to 220. So, if, like you were going to ask the question, uh, what if we arrange all the balls in a row, but none of them can be of the same color, like technically? Then we're starting, then that's a, that's a definitely, we could, yeah. So actually that's a good question. So it's a, it's a different question for sure, but we can ask, I, I'm in more room. I, I know for sure I'm in more room. So I'm gonna come back to this. So how many ways, right? Cause I'm assuming it's a how many ways question. Yeah. How many ways can we arrange these balls This, this question might be extra hard. I'm not sure. In a row, so that no ball sits next to a ball of the same color. Um, it might be really hard to answer this question with three different colors. Well, let's take a look for a second. I'm doing, I'm, I always do this kind of the wrong way. Because I feel like. I honestly feel like something like that might be after the test. Because. Sure. I, I don't know. Like Mr. Is it Mr. Uh, Dr. Goodell kind of like throws. Yeah. Balls at that. So what I want to point out about the way this question, again, I'm, I'm still in the same situation, right? Four, five green, four, whatever, whatever. Um, I feel like this question is hard to answer because of how many colors there are. Because if I, for example, the first ball could be, let's say, green. And then the next one could be red or blue. And then depending on what I've picked here, the next one could be either green or whichever one I didn't pick here. So I feel like 
I think three makes it too difficult a problem to address. But let's look at a different question. Um, so let's say we had, yeah, let's say there were eight green balls and four red balls. Now it's kind of impossible. Well, it's not, no, yeah. Unless the numbers work out perfectly, it's impossible for no balls of the same color to be next to each other. Usually what you can ask is how many ways are the are there for the lesser number of things to not be next to each other? So if we put them all in a row, how many ways can we arrange them so that no red balls are next to each other? And I'm always, I always feel like I want to try and do this problem the hardest way possible. But I'm not going to do that this time. So here's what we've got. I'm not going to, so usually for this kind of problem, the mistake I make is I start writing out my spaces. It's not what we want to do. So I'm going to write my eight green balls. Green, 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 green. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. And basically on either side of a green ball, in any of these spots, a red ball could go. So a red ball could go in any of these spots, but only one, right? So how many spots are there to go in? Well, if there's eight green balls, then how many spots in between and to the sides do there have to be? Nine. Yeah, definitely nine. So then there are nine places I can put my four red balls. So there are going to be exactly nine choose four, which is nine factorial over five factorial times four factorial ways of arranging them. And I suppose I could calculate this, right? That's going to be something. Nine times eight times seven times six over four times three times two times one. And we could simplify that, I'm sure. Four times two equals eight. Six divided by three equals two. We've got nine times seven, which is 63 times two, which is 126. But it's definitely easier. So it, it's, yeah, it really is easier to do this way than to do what I want to do. So I, I really want to like write out the 12 spots and they're like, okay, well, I can put a green one here, but then I can't put a green, right? Or I, could, I put a red one here and I can't put a red one next to it. But then I have like, there's too many options to do it that way. In fact, he did that three, he, there was a problem he did at the beginning of class, I think on Monday, I think it was, where he talked about like arranging girls and boys. He didn't want the three girls sitting next to each other. And when it was in a row, it wasn't too bad. And then it was in a circle, it was a little more challenging. And I definitely did that problem a totally different way that was much, much more He also had not that good. on the quiz, too. It was uh, seven boys and, or seven people, and two of them were next to each other in a circle. Okay. Sure. So that problem, that, the, that, that phrasing is not quite as terrible as the, as like the original phrasing. Or as the other problem they did, or the other so um, right. If we have seven people sitting in a circle, and two of them cannot sit next to each other. So let's see. So. Here's what I'm thinking. I got seven spots. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And although I really shouldn't number them probably because it doesn't really actually matter where the first person sits. So we've got person 
A and B, and then we have C, D, E, F, and G. And A and B can't sit next to each other. So where do you want to put A? Doesn't actually matter. Sure. So there's A. Right, and he, he talks to this in the table, nothing's marked, so like, it doesn't matter if you put them there or there, so it looks the same. So great. So now, A can't sit next to B. Right? So how many choices for a seat does B have? Um, so they can't go in six and they can't go in one. Right. So they would have four choices? Right. So there are four choices for B. They've picked their seat, and now... For the remaining five people, how many seats are left? Um, there would be, uh, there would be five places. Different. Right. So there's how many different ways can I arrange them? Does order matter? No. I think it kind of does actually. Or I, I it's, it's an order is not the best word here, right? But like order the. So that one more time? It didn't matter for the rest of them, only for those, those first two. Right, but so I guess I should say, does it look different if I put C here versus putting C here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess I should ask for persons, so if I just start seating them down, how many spots can C sit in? Right, how many spots could D sit in? How many spots can D E E sit in? And then e F and then G. So it's going to be four times five factorial. The four possible seats that B can sit in, right? Either here, 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 or here. And then once A and B are chosen, the rest of them can sit anywhere they want. So there's five factorial ways of doing that. Um, yeah, it's a little different than the girl question, but very, very related still. It's always kind of weird with these questions. Like you've got kind of some restriction and you kind of work around that in the least, the least kind of intrusive way as possible. It's, it's, it's not always easy. It's usually not easy, I should say really. Um, back to these balls in the jar for a moment. There was one more, there was actually two more questions I wanted to address. What's the way, how many ways can we get I know it's to get no green. Well, and it's, uh, I'll remind you, right? We're still in the situation of five green, four red, three blue, 12 total. If I want no green, and I'm picking three. So how many balls do I have to choose from if I don't want any green ones? So I'm not so so that would be the number of ways I could pick seven balls. That would be the number of ways I could pick. Hmm, I want to say that twelve to seven. That'd be the number of ways I could pick any seven balls from the total group of twelve. You're right with the seven. I am limited, but the thing is, I'm limited to seven. So out of the seven that aren't green, I want to pick or choose three of those. So close. I don't want five. Five's too many. I want three. Because out, so right from the four red and the three blue balls, I want to know the number of ways I can pick any three of those. So maybe I get all three red, or two red and one blue, or one red and two blue. And there's exactly this many ways of doing it, which is going to be seven factorial over four factorial times three factorial. Which is seven times six times five over three times two times one, which is 35. Okay, now here's the question that always becomes a little bit challenging. What if I wanted to find the number of ways of getting at least one green? Well, that's different than what we've been doing before. At least one green means you actually have to consider a few different possibilities. We want exactly one green, exactly two greens, or exactly three greens. 
So if I want exactly one green, well, how many green balls are there to pick from? Right, so it's gonna be five, choose one, but I'm still picking three balls in total. So after I pick the one green ball, then I want two balls that are not green. How many not green balls are there to pick from? Uh, Sorry, I know you can't see everything here. Not green balls, uh, there's seven. Right, and how many of them do I want? You want uh, three. Well, I want three total, but I already have picked one green. Oh, so two. Right. That's the way I can get exactly one green ball and two not green balls. So then if I want exactly two green balls, there's gonna be five choose two ways of getting two green balls. But then I still need a third ball. How many ways are there of choosing my third ball? Um, are we still on the two green or just... Yeah, we're still on two green. So I picked two green. But again, I have to pick a total of three. Seven, two, one. Right. And then if I want three green, it's going to be. Five, two, three. And then just for the sake of completeness, times seven, choose what? Zero. Right. Which is just one. So then this ends up being, okay, so I'm going to be a little quick, quick here. Five, choose one is just five. Seven choose two is seven factorial over two factorial times five factorial. Five choose two is five factorial over three factorial times two factorial. Seven choose one is just seven. And five choose three is five factorial over two factorial times three factorial. That ends up being five times, this is seven times six over two plus five times four over two times seven plus five times four over two. Let's see, what do I have here? It's gonna be, um, I I oh yeah, that's right. That's, that's the whole point of this problem. Um, brain, brain, brain. Um, sorry, division here, six over two is three times seven is 21. That's gonna be 105 plus 70 plus 10 which is going to be 185. Kind of a lot of work. Oh, sorry, yes. So here's the point of this. This is going to get, some, again, back to kind of this idea that I mentioned once before of the complement, which is that instead of calculating this, so calculating the, pro, the number of ways of getting at least one green, I could take my total minus the number of ways of getting less than or equal, sorry, less than one green meaning zero greens. So I could say this is gonna be the same as the total minus the number of ways of what I don't want. So minus the number of ways of no green. We already know the total number of ways you can pick three balls. It's going to be 12 choose three. And the number of ways of getting no green balls is going to be, well, if I want no green balls, it's going to be three of the other color. So it's going to be seven choose three. Times five choose zero, or sorry, yeah, five choose zero if you really want. Right, that's zero green and three of the other two colors. Okay, we'll check this out. 12 choose three for the sixth time is 220. Seven choose three is going to be, well, we can calculate it. It's going to be, I feel like I made a mistake here. Sorry, I'm just making sure I didn't do something stupid. No, no, I'm fine. Okay, sorry. Seven choose three is seven factorial over three factorial times four factorial. Five choose zero is one. So that's going to end up being 220 minus. 7 factorial divided by this is going to be 7 times 6 times 5 divided by 6, which is 35, which ends up being 185. So the point there is usually if someone says to find like the number of ways of getting at least like one or two or something, and instead of adding up all those things, you can do the total number of things subtracting off just the things you don't want, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah.
much time we got? We got just a few minutes. Okay, come on, people. So, that's not what I want to do. So, we'll talk about moving towards probability. So let's say a fair coin is flipped four times. Let's list the sample space, which is, or which we usually use the symbol of capital omega for. So omega is going to equal the set containing all things. I don't really, I mean, you could write like a set containing all things. We're just gonna list them all out. So we could have all heads or you could have three heads and one tail, which is never fun to list these all out, but it is illuminating. Or you could have two heads and two tails. H, oops, I missed one. H, T, H, T, H, T, H, H. Did I miss one? Is that all the ways you can have H first? Oh, there's all the ways. Sorry, I didn't miss one. T, H, H, T, T, H, T, H, T, T, H, H. And then we could have one head. Or finally, no heads. And I should emphasize because, of course, I should emphasize the number of ways of getting four heads is four choose four. The number of ways of getting three heads is four choose three. The number of ways of getting two heads is four choose two. The number of ways of getting one head is four choose one. The number of ways of getting no heads is four choose zero. Four choose zero is one. Four choose one is four. Four choose two is six. Four choose three is four. Four choose four is one. So the size of our sample space is one plus four plus six plus four plus one, which is 16. So there are 16 things in our sample space. So what's the probability of flipping exactly two heads. But all those numbers are together, I guess, over uh, 16 choose two? Not quite. So when you say all those numbers, do you mean all these numbers? Uh, the four, 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 three, four, two, four, one, two, three. Right, so all those numbers added together, those actually add up to 16. Which, which makes sense, right? Because, so this number here, this is just, this is just how many possibilities there are. Which is exactly the number of ways of this plus this plus this plus this plus this. One plus four plus six plus four plus one, which is 16. Um, if I want to find the probability of flipping exactly two heads, it's going to be the number of ways of getting two heads divided by the number of ways that anything can happen. So looking at our table here, how many different ways can we flip four coins and get two heads? Four, two, two. Right. Which is equal to six. And the number of ways of getting any, any, any possibility is going to be 16, which is two to the fourth. Four choose two is one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six out of 16, which is three out of eight. Um, all right, I guess I should stop. Um, right, so again, just to kind of be emphatic about it, whenever you're finding a probability, 
it's always the number of ways of getting what you want divided by the total number of ways anything can happen. And I guess I'll stop there. <laughs>